Now, if you've watched LEC cast, and if you haven't, that's, that's I, okay. You, you gave me this warning that I, was coming. You told I, me I it was coming. I don't like this duo because I think it requires incredibly high execution to get value out of it. But what I will say is, that's an LEC. I have not seen what PSG could do with the Lucianami, and they certainly looked incredible on the Aphelios in their games previously. Well, so maybe, maybe they could be the team that can execute this the caliber it needs to be executed at to get value out of it. Not often would I say that the LCS has the uh, champions in their back pocket that the LEC doesn't, but in this instance, there were a number of good Lucianami lanes in the LCS. Prince obviously was a great one, but Stixay as well. And so, to be fair, speaking, I mean, Gory also good at the Cassante made Caps the only other one to play it in our region, and it did not look good. So credit to the LCS and that. There, there you go. But for for Waco being the kind of de facto carry of this team, I think uh, going out early and trying to get in bigger leads, he had a monstrous team fight carry on the Aphelios and stuff like that. But if you can just get Bio earlier on and actually just be funneling him gold the whole time, a little bit better. I think the only concern that I have, well, this is one of Waco's, it is Waco's most played champion thus far this year. We saw PSG fall behind and ultimately come back through big, massive team fights, as you highlighted. This is not a champion that normally gets to do that. You don't comfortably outrange the Kennen in terms of threat. You don't comfortably outrange the Zaya. It is not Nefelios. It is not a Jinx. So really going to need to see a higher and more consistent level of execution from PSG today. That said, I think the Annie is a perfect pick as an option to shut down caps in the mid lane. So interesting here, a lot of target bans thrown at Yike so far with the Bell Death and Nocturne, but not the Nidalee. As if they're saying, we're not concerned about this because of the magic damage profile already coming in from top lane. They think, think that so. maybe it'd be too much. And then the physical damage mids, some of the popular ones already banned out, like the Cassante Flex coming in there. So a very heads up play by them saying, hey, ban the 80 carry junglers that we think Yike might play instead of just following recent data. Yeah, and hilariously, Nocturne most recently played as a, as a mid laner for G2. So again, the G2 curveballs continue to come. I want to see how deep the pools are going to go. Now, Viego. opting for the Viego, continuing to take away AD jungles. And as you highlighted, the second you have an AP top laner, it doesn't 100% confirm that you need an AD jungler, but more likely than not, it's going to be what they're looking towards. And opting to take that away, that is Yike's all-time most played champion in his professional history. So like to see it off the board. And Wukong, Again, high impact team fighter. G2 seem like they have a very clear draft strategy. Ooh! You made it! Okay! Okay! All right, so Kha'Zix, a champion that was recently buffed, especially with isolation changes, a little bit less focused on the pokey W playstyle, some slow pulled off evolved W, but isolation range dropped down significantly, so much easier to find targets to assassinate. And Q damage buffed as well, so. Kha'Zix, again, historically a very feast or famine champion, but G2, eyes on the prize. We've talked about it. Caps, utility mid laner. Looks like it will be the Gragas. It's about setup. It's about CC, setting up Yike again for success. You have so many engaged tools. And if Kha'Zix starts to take over, Nami's going to have a hell of a time. Because <laughs> like, you can never walk alone through your own jungle ever again if this champion gets ahead. And going to have to see what Yike does with it. Because speaking of historic champions, I mean, back in the LFL, this was a champion that Yike made his name on. Yes, it's not Viego, it doesn't have the sheer quantity of games, but he was known for being an absolute terror on this pick. All right, last pick for Aji, going for the Malphite. Not played too much, only once this split, but a champion that is continuing this kind of all-in identity that they've built. Very, very hard engaged. They want to blow somebody up, start getting resets for the Viego. For the side of G2, they have a lot of tools to kind of absorb that. You can blow up one person, the rest of the team are all basically threats. And then with the Kennen ult, obviously Caps ult as well. Rakan, all these tools are great for if you just blow one person up, end up really short range, a lot of AoE available. And Mark, I'm, I'm ready for a fist fight now because I think you've highlighted it so well. It's PSG, blow up one champion, reset ad nauseum with Viego until you kill the enemy team. And G2, it's blow up all these champions by simultaneously pushing your R button. R. Just push R. Yeah, I mean, this is also a very different identity for PSG than what we normally see. This is the... Uh, Third Viego game for Junjia, who's mostly playing support for the rest of the team. Things like Sejuani's or Wukong's and team fighting. And they are the slowest team in terms of bloodiness in the tournament, as well as one of the latest game teams, generally speaking. So they have really flipped their play style with this draft. One in this best of three. Second best of three of the day. Winner moves on to the main stage of MSI, hoping to join BLG and the rest of the teams there. And you can hear, here in-house, G2 Army out in force, backing up the European second seed, their representatives. And this is, this is a weird game, Mark, because normally when we prep for drafts, 
We're, we're not... <laughs> you prep for drafts? <laughs> no, we're not a mile off. And I feel like this PSG one has completely yeah. caught me off guard because the scaling looked really good. Like, say what you want about the early to mid-game execution. This team can fight mid-late game. And they have, in draft, hampered that ability, opted for more laning power. And it's going to be a tall task to outclass Mickey and Hansama in the laning phase. But that's essentially what you're asking for here. I think this is a... In a Best of series. This is an interesting strategy for game one, but I actually don't hate it in the sense that, like, Waco is your primary carry. You are playing, like you said, the most played bot lane. This part of the, the draft, at least, is very normal for PSG. And it's saying, can we actually beat Hans and Mickey in this kind of pretty common matchup that you tend to see a lot of the time? And if yes, that's going to force G2 to kind of adapt to this strategy you've gone for. If not, well, then you can always fall back into, like, the Aphelios Thresh lanes, Jinx Thresh, these kinds of things. And so for that angle for PSG, I like it a lot. For the rest of the draft, though, like you said, very different stuff. Not very many play champions. Like, this is only the second anti game for you bound stuff. Certainly now, as we just check in across the lanes. Nothing too exciting yet. Cole being taken early on makes a ton of sense. Again, the Malphite not going to provide a lot of kill pressure. Might as well get some more opportunity for Broken Blade. Leverage that range advantage and just try to have a bit of a gold lead early items. And keeping a track on those ultimates, especially on the top side of the map, even though we are still... Pretty far away away from that. And I really was wondering if we were going to get some crazy early game cheese. I think that even if it was G2's plan, at this point would be heavily mitigated thanks to a very heads up ward coming in from the side of PSG, making sure that they're tracking the Kha'Zix early pathing. Yep, going to see the full clear of bot side up to top for Yike. Just trying to farm up initially on the Kha'Zix. Both teams actually full clear up to top side. The level two early for G2, giving them Pryo in this lane early on. Uh, Lushinami, not the strongest, most insane level one compared to Zaya Rakan, where you press W and run at them, and with that buff, are able to win most trades. Ooh, but now Yike's getting frisky. This is a G2 classic. Get a little bit of pressure in the mid lane, start to leverage it to try to get Yike into the enemy jungle, start to get some vision down. A lot of wards out of PSG, like you were kind of saying. So they see this moving. They saw Caps completely ditch mid lane. Junjia hovering up in the top side in case a dive comes through. Caps in the area, not a ton of mana, but I don't know how much he needs to really pull this play off. Are they willing to commit for the dive is the big question. Just walking away for now, denying that's going to be the body slam initial. They're going to fall up immediately with damage. First blood for the Kha'Zix on the top side. Nice slow play by G2 there. They saw the W used by Junjia, knowing that there's no more hard CC for this duo trapped in the turret. Kind of chased him out from underneath the turret a little bit, and then point blank body slam by Caps to land that stun. Easy kill, flash out. Nice first blood there, an instant teleport back to mid lane, not really losing anything for that play. Great use of the advantage of the push that they were able to build in mid lane. Level 3 coming in on the bottom side of the map. Maybe where Lucian and Nami can start to fight back a bit here, but even more pressure on the PSG bottom side of the map. Now the top side already starting to fall apart. Kha'Zix getting a kill early is devastating. The good news is Junja still ahead in CS, able to grab a few creeps under the tower, able to grab an extra camp, but top lane's looking rough. Bot lane's even, and uh, jungle is very ahead in favor of G2 at this stage of the game. It's not a massive, insurmountable gold lead, but it is definitely the kind of start G2 we're looking for. So we'll take a look at this dive again. I'm checking to see if Yike was able to get isolation range. Just how much were these buffs? Does that minion get shot right there? No, he's not definitely not isolated. <laughs> I was like, how crazy is this? No, not at all. Uh, but yeah, just very clean execution. Like we said, they walk. Uh, ooh, hold on, another fight Broken in the top side. Walking away, minion damage. Not going to be enough to finish the job. Aji, uh, Junja on the way in. No flash for Broken Blade. He is going to use it to get over the wall, rather. Yike now in trouble. Flashing out to safety. Desperately needs to get this kill. He gets it with a W. He's going to get taken down here. Oh. Midlaus. Junja. How long on the lead? Down. Waiting. No, can't quite sidestep it. Huge there for PSG. They're able to get that kill back. Nice return kill there. Junja back on the board. Gets the buffs transferred as well. Aji does drop for it though. Wave pushed in as well, so this is going to get even worse for him in the CS deficit. Was not able to collect much of that wave during the initial dive. And then this repeat gank not too hot for him. Hansama stepping up, not a ton of mana, but it doesn't look like he's gonna need it. Woody, Caps coming in off to the side. Body slam will not connect. Waco slowed down, push out of the lane. Woody burns down. Waco still standing, but G2 getting everything they came for. Caps is a menace already, making his pressure felt in both side lanes. A kill up to the top side. One down to the bot lane now as they escort this wave in. Such a difficult situation for PSG. 1.4k gold lead, five minutes into the game. You got a cause because already got serrated Dirk. And again, you're getting little bits back, but not nearly as much as you'd like here on the back of this play. Very dangerous play by Broken Blade here, kind of baiting this one in, willing to go in for the setup stun into a minion wave, almost dies. Just barely stays alive. And Junja not quite in range to find that cleanup kill. Flashed out by Broken Blade. Oh, and just, just so a, awkward. Yeah, just a long chase down sequence. The stun doesn't quite land. 
isn't quite fast enough to walk away. So many what ifs, so many things that are just on the edge here. Yike, not quite able to escape from this one. Would have been murder. He would have gotten, I mean, yes, he would have actually gotten away with murder. <laughs> Context does get punished. <laughs> True. <laughs> At this point in the game, Woody doing what he can to protect the jungler's back. And only really the good news is he's about not too far behind in XP. Yeah, and this is a comp for PSG, which will be a little bit stronger at sixes as, again, Caps is being a menace. And this is, if you did not watch LEC meta, Gragas, an absolute menace! Oh, oh it's the alley-oop! The slam dunk by Yike following up the explosive cast by Caps, knocking him back in, absolutely isolated that time around, able to blow him up. And Yubao does get to walk back topside. Knock up, now coming through, Hunt Summer looking for the snare setup, he's gonna get it. Woody just getting absolutely shredded on the bottom side. There's no room for him to do anything. Walker now starting to dive back, but there's nothing left in the tank. Now G2 are absolutely destroying PSG in the first 10 minutes of this game, looking a lot more like that second game versus Loud. Maybe it was nerves game one, who can say, but since then G2 have looked absolutely incredible. Making plays on both sides of the map, drawing up all the resources to the top side in G2's bot lane, knowing that there's nothing to stop them from going aggressive. Mickey finds a very nice engage. Yeah, and now Woody's in such a deficit, Waka's in such a deficit, it's really just hard for them to play this out on even footing. It'll take a mistake from G2 or a jungler really to show presence here to find that advantage to get something back. And, you know, we go back to the draft. Cannon for Broken Blade, a big pick, traded back for this Annie. The Annie has done nothing yet this game, and that sucks. You know, that's such a difficult position where you aim for this power pick, you get level six, but you don't, you're not laning against anyone. Caps rocks up, he throws a barrel down, and he leaves. He does not want anything to do with the Annie. Well, it's especially so important for Broken Blade to get a champion with side lane pressure there, so they have somewhere to go with this kind of roaming Dragas, Nautilus, whatever play style, and that's why the Kennen ban will probably be looked at in game two, regardless of where this goes from here. And where I was going was, you know, PSG more of a level six comp once Annie gets her flash ultimate available. Uh, Lucianami can win multiple stages of the lane phase, but of course become most terrifying post six once Mythics are unlocked, of course. Um, and the fact that they are already this far behind is a bit of a disaster because your power points, when you're already 3k gold down, means that you're still fighting an uphill battle. And I think the big thing for me is it would be hard against any champion in League of Legends to get this deficit. But when you're at this kind of deficit against Kha'Zix, the game becomes, because when Kha'Zix is behind, he doesn't do anything. He's just a bug, like a bug on a windshield. He does absolutely nothing, just splat every single fight. It's a, nu a nuisance. Nuisance. Now we're like shooting the next sequel in the Alien series where he just comes out of the darkness and one shots you. I was, like, gonna, I was gonna go Starship Troopers for my, okay, my bug fair, references. Okay, that's fair, that's yeah, fair. Yeah. We can dig the sci-fi bug references. How old are people watching these games? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I think like the fact that you already have a Mythic at eight minutes for Kha'Zix, first time in this champion, another one that people will have to be looking at. The Nidalee performance was incredible yet, uh, two days ago for Yike. This time around, <laughs> looking really good on the Kha'Zix. They are trying to set up for this Dragon here. Maybe this is an angle for PSG. Six is coming online soon for Woody as well. That they can get a grouped up team fight, which is obviously what they want to do oh, with this Here we fight. go. Full set up here, but Cap spots him and they just walk away. Oh, PSG can just not catch a break in this game. Bottom side of the map, Waco, at least able to clear out the wave. Maybe he'll be able to go back and complete a Mythic, but I think he's still a bit of gold behind here, so doesn't have it quite yet, I believe. No, shouldn't have it, only sitting on 600 gold in inventory currently. Ooh, another it's, 500. It's getting a trick by, by how accelerated Yike is with these kills and assists, <laughs> as well as just rushing the Eclipse. Much, much faster for him compared to anyone else, and so... Wherever they see him, they're going to have to respect it and kind of back off right now, getting caught out in the river on the pink board vision. So Wako and Woody will know that soon they'll be under threat and have to be careful for and engage by Mickey. There's this dragon now being set up. Teleport's available for PSG, so if they want to contest it, they can, but I think might want to wait for Drake 2 or something. I think waiting for those first item spikes just makes a ton of sense. As you highlighted, Yike is so accelerated. He's willing to burn so much just for a dragon when gold is really going to be your big problem. That buff is not going to save you in this game state. Also, that was a very fast dragon for the fact that you now uh, do Q evolve first, I assume, for the, uh, the Kha'Zix there, versus a lot of the times W max, which didn't uh, actually increase your damage. It was the slow and kind of team fight that you were yeah. often in, in the old Kha'Zix builds doing, but now with Q level four, also with the Evolve, does a ton of damage and the cooldown re refund on it means that you can actually melt that dragon insanely fast. Yeah. My favorite Kha'Zix history fun fact is that he has had basically every ability giga nerfed or reworked because it's always been one ability that's been the problem. 
Alt was OP. He used to take. You didn't like many hours of Alt while invisible. <laughs> That was probably the up, up. that was the most egregious. Yeah, there was like the, the W. Ooh, knockback here. Mickey now gonna go for the follow up. Annie just getting burned down. You bow. Night ticking. Not gonna get anything there. And honestly, PSG are just running out of options. G2 are doing everything that they want to on the map, and PSG running out of room to play. Now fishing for an opportunity on the top side, trying to get something nice back. Flash. Quick flash out for Broken Blade. Ready Ready to team. go, clean reaction, but now Yike can come in. And again, the stun coming in. If Diego isolates himself, this is going to get bad. Yike does so much damage. He's going to wait for the wave. He's going to take his time, but that's an isolated Diego. Oh, dead man walking. I don't think it gets any better for Aji. Mickey going to fish for the knock about. You just going to try to get one back in return. But Caps is here, too. It's a house party on the top side of the map at PSG. We're not invited. G2 are breaking ankles on the rift right now, making the play happen in mid lane from the roam from Mickey, and that instantly transfers up to the top side where PSG were looking for their own play. G2 playing well connected here, following up on wherever PSG wants to pressure. G2 fans feeling it, feeling the energy, feeling the momentum. That guy doesn't even have the right jersey on, but it does not matter. <laughs> that is how much excitement Details, there is. Draco's, we don't care. We're not worried about him. Woody in trouble. Bubble gonna come out. The beautiful use of the ultimate from I'm gonna stop it. Walker now trying to fire back. Dash through, gonna get it. That's the shutdown. That's big, but Broken Blade surely should finish the kill. Nice sidestep on the Shuriken from Walker. The cleanse coming out. Can he make it over the wall? Can he E? Can he get out to safety? The dash, the blast cone, the sidestep. He's not gonna get hit in the end, but now Caps and Yike on pursuit. Junja gonna make it out as well. Well played from Wako to find the kill. Nice one for one there. Still coming out decently for G2, but does get the teleport out of Broken Blade in order to cover that play. Hansama dropping there. I think it was a shutdown as well, so Wako able to grab his Mythic as well and kind of keep pace at least with the members of G2. He's the uh, hope for the side of PSG in a lot of their games that we saw. He was the one getting funneled in terms of gold percent and damage percent. He's one of the highest players in the entire tournament. He is a huge threat, but not quite on the same late game scaling option as he was before. Yeah, now we take a look back at this play, how it unfolded. You can see the idea, you can see the setup. Aji waiting in the darkness, Broken Blade quick. I think the, I'm not sure if the Vision spotted him or Broken Blade, which uh, was ready to go. Reaction, baby. Nice reaction out of Broken Blade there. And then the setup, knowing that the rest of the team was coming to back him up. Yike able to run forward. Didn't quite grab turret aggro there. Very well played by him. The extended range on the claws there, able to find that kill. And then the rest of the team just showing up. Aji, nice flash, but uh, a little bit too early. The fact that the Annie hadn't quite shown up means that he dropped for nothing. Difficult, difficult situation to play out. 5k gold lead now at 13 minutes into the game, and I think for PSG, it's about evaluating what went wrong in this one. And I, and to me, going back to the basics, opting for more scaling as a safety option would be big here, but when you draft champions that are supposed to match and win early, and you lose this handedly in the early game, you know, it can shake your confidence. So I'm just hoping for PSG's sake that they can keep their eyes on the prize and, and regroup coming into next game. I think it's also one of these games where, like, yes, technically you these champions should win early, but the specific places that they were picked into is not quite the case. The fact that Gragas gets cryo so easily, the fact that Malphite yeah. was taken into the cannon, which is something that Broken Blade's obviously extremely proficient in, means that you're going to get pushed in early. That's going to unlock this early move from G2. It's like, yes, these are technically early game champions that want to group up and team fight, but you didn't take them into situations. It's like you almost drafted this comp blind. Like this is a yeah. draft that you can take into almost any any other composition, and like in theory, it'd be fine. But G2 had answers. Certainly did. Broken Blade might not, however. Does get out of tower range just in time to reset. He's now going to ult to try to clear the wave. He shouldn't get the chance to uh, die to tower here. He might die to tower, but I'm pretty sure Aji's going to get the credit. A little seismic shark. Make him, uh, make him work <laughs> for it. I like it, Broken Blade. Don't die to the turret. Well played. Rebound now just trying to uh, rebound. Trying to clear the wave out there. Jinja now responding. But yeah, make him walk in. Make him slap you down. Don't give it to the tower. So a nice kill there by PSG, finding the one on Broken Blade. During that time, G2 pressuring mid, also going to be grabbing this Rift Herald. So not the end of the world, but a small bit of gold back into their pockets. Unfortunately, again, Malphite probably not the one who needs to get accelerated the most right now. He's always going to be the R button to engage. During this time, though, it didn't give them pressure in the bot side, so able to stop any dragon stacking from potentially coming through from G2. I think at this stage of the game with this kind of lead, G2 should be trying to accelerate as much as possible. Yeah, this is probably not a soul point game if you uh, but tell me how this ended. If I'm shot calling for PSG, you're just trying to keep next one objective at a time. We got a dragon, let's see what we can get after that. You know what I mean? Just take it slow, take it simple, because you're at a big deficit. Waco really can't afford to stay in there, but luckily has the dash, we'll make <laughs> it out to safety. I appreciate the emote game, despite having a bit of a, a tough opening matchup here. Still throwing out emotes. 
it's a it's the universal language. Everyone understands the sad dog. <laughs> you know what's happening. Uh, PSG able to defend as well. They did lose the top turret after the rift turret was immediately used, but probably not the end of the world. Could have been a lot worse. Mid lane turret's still up. I'm surprised G2 didn't show a little bit more patience and probably drop it down there. It's the fact that Yubao was able to reset and stop the second turret from dropping from the Herald, which okay. I think was probably the game plan. Observer's playing with our hearts here. Han Sama stun now coming out, trying to get away from the bear. Very threatening. The knock not quite going to connect. Excellently played by Yubao, but there's certainly no out of this one. He's isolated. He's revealed. Yike is on the hunt now. They do have mid prio, so there's a chance that they can move up to protect him here. Yikes, Run, tiny jump. Sorny, sor yeah, Sigourney Weaver. Run. <laughs> And she's out. Yubao makes it to safety. So good that they have the team there to respond, to recover. In that situation, it cost them the flash. Traded for the ult upon Sama. If they can capitalize in the next minute, maybe they can get something done. And good news is Wako has been left alone to just farm and continuously push out mid lane. And those caps connects on a body slam. He doesn't have that much kill threat. Kind of showing the mid game here from PSG being respectable, despite how bad the early lane phase went. Map movement from G2. Some of the trades here showing that, hey, we can actually move around the map, understand where pressure is going to flow, how to absorb that, get things on the flip side of the map. Like, I think this is why PSG in their own region was so fearsome. Because, yeah. because if you didn't get a big gold lead like G Team managed to do, a lot of times PSG could safely stay, uh, scale into the mid and late game. And I think that is a, a force to be reckoned with. Very often when we see teams uh, you know, from emerging regions come into the tournament, they womp a stomp their entire region. And, and they come here and it's like you're contested more in lanes than you're anticipating, you're contested more across roles, uh, and we don't often get to see them play the way that they play domestically, and that's often like kind of frustrating to watch as an international league fan, but the good news for PSG is like they were willing to fall behind, they would fall behind, and they would come back through incredible team fighting, which they showed yesterday, and they're definitely going to need to show more in this series, and certainly in this game, if they want to mount a comeback, because it's still 6k deficit. Still a 6k deficit, getting a little bit worse there with G2 grabbing the bot inner, or bot outer turret, excuse me. I was about to say that the turret game is not that massive. For how big of a gold lead that it is, the fact that it's only two turrets to zero, you would expect maybe a couple more had dropped. So a lot of this gold is not really reclaimable from that perspective, where it's CS and kill gold. Caps in a tricky position. Tanky boy. Oh, Barrel oh, not going to connect, but it goes over. The old swippy swap. Oh, boy. PSG getting a little bit ahead of themselves there. The barrel not that great by Caps. Obviously, he was trying to hit the Viego away, but still have flash up. And so once Viego hops the wall, they just do a little switcheroo, get out safely. G2 looking pretty good. Talking about uh, domestic results and how you know PSG getting contested a little bit more here. G2 actually looking very good. I know a lot of people are concerned about them finishing, quote unquote, fourth yeah. in the uh, final stage of play. But it was Mad Lions, also El Yoya, saying that he felt like that was the real finals. Them versus G2, he felt like G2 was actually one of the best teams still in Europe. And we're seeing here that G2 have identified a clear blueprint for success, where they you know, pick these champions and get push early, where they use that push to set up Yike to, to die the lane and to focus. And to, they snowball so rapidly. You uh, can see sir? this team with a lead looking pretty confident, but Junja? Spotting out some unwelcome guests in his jungle. Mickey trying to cut off the rotation, but a little scary to do versus Annie who has an instant stun. Yike! That's a lot of damage! Junja now running for his life. Yike gonna find the kill. That's gonna be the charm now coming into Waka. But Waka firing back, pulling on the backside. Meanwhile, the bear has come down, and the shutdown onto Yike coming through. Broken Blade only gonna find one, but Waka is still standing. Caps can do a lot of damage, but Aji is there to body block. Yubao on the side, the bear coming in, just creating a little bit of disruption. Doesn't have the Rylize like support Annie, so can't do a lot! And just gets served right back in the waiting arms of G2. Waka needs to get away from that one, but he oh. can't. There's just too many feathers and too tight a space. G2 finding the fight. Nice pullback there by Han Sama, getting the angle on Wako to root him up. Caps with a nice cask as well to get the knockback on the Annie. Very squishy, like you are saying, just with the Leandries done there. PSG had a moment to turn there. It was a nice ult by Aja to interrupt Broken Blade comboing down onto Wako. Feeling like they had the potential chase down sequence, but not quite there. G2, 12 to 4 in kills, almost 8,000 gold ahead. Here's yeah. the play again. And they think they've caught out the Rakan. And it looks like it's initially positive. I think kind of baited into a false sense of security there. Yeah, with well, just the, the stealth in that I think came through. You don't see Yike until he's directly on top of Junji and already getting isolated target damage down there that Viego instantly assassinated, where we talked about a lot of this team comp being about finding kills and resets. If the Viego was still alive there, you grab the corpse of Yike and you start resetting through this fight potentially, but because they killed the primary carry in some of these senses, 
with the Viego dead, there's just no chase down here. Aja, like we said, nice ultimate there to interrupt Broken Blade, but just getting a little bit too greedy, maybe losing yeah. track of uh, ultimates used, not knowing that one's still available for caps. Constant here, this was a nice angle on the ultimate pullback. Yeah, just really nowhere for it. The second the root connects, he's dead. Maybe he can get some damage back. Maybe he can take Hansama out of the equation with the bear already on top of his head, but he's not an option that's ultimately going to come through. Cloud Soul is going to be the name of the game. G2 only grabbing their second Drake, so I would still be surprised if this was a Soul game. However, G2 going to take the steps to get there or at least take it away from PSG. And in that last fight, Damage down, courtesy of AWS. You can see uh, Annie was actually the big factor there alongside Lucian. No one else on the side of PSG really got involved. Yeah, the uh, classic Annie alt burn just by walking the bear next to people. <laughs> Secretly doing yeah. a ton of damage yeah, it's with kind Leandries. Of, yeah. Is it fake damage though, like Ezreal and Varus damage numbers, where it's like, yeah, great, you did 1,200 damage per minute, you were shooting arrows at a Scion. Or is it's, it like real damage? It, it's, it it's a little bit of fake damage because it's spread across the entire team, burning down like 10 every second yeah. on five people. Ends up to be quite a bit for DPS, but uh, not the most important damage. Yeah. Uh-oh. Caps, making off to the side. Waco isolated for now. G2 is still playing careful, though. Giving some respect inside of PSG, waiting for someone to slip up, kind of just stepping forward, slowly advancing that vision line. Of course, Aji in the meantime, bottom lane, pushing, looking for that bounty on the tower. Might just give the opportunity for G2 to take this Baron uncontested, though. They should just obliterate this Baron's health bar. Absolutely a very fast Baron here for G2. So many carry members as well as that Kha'Zix isolation damage. Will force PSG to react to it. Just the TP. Junja. Get anything else done. Knockback coming through. Woody isolated. Is going to find a bit of a slow. You bow the wall. Well, G2. Oh, they sniffing out. They're not going to risk. They're not going to go too deep. Respect for the patience. Did cost caps his ultimate, so not available, but they start the Baron back up again. Alt for alt with Woody losing his. Oh, but they're just in the dark. Yeah, PSG it's just such a flip. This. I have no idea how fast New Kazakhstan. I don't happen. know! Observer. What is happening, <laughs> Observers? Thank you. 4K, getting lower. Mickey now going to go over the wall, but he's not going to connect on anyone. He's immediately going to leap out to safety. He's now turning his attention to the bottom side of the map. Broken Blade now going in, but there's two fights. This fight split across two fronts, but it's Hansama! And as he pulls the feathers back, he finds one, but Junja gets one in return! The Viego popping off, he steals, he goes in, his recon! He turns them around, he takes their corpses, and he beats them to hell with it! Junja showing up! The XEDG sub-jungler popping off in that fight. We were talking about the Viego as the critical member to watch. G2 were not able to find him this time. Still a little bit risky. It's unhinged. <laughs> Pretty low, but Caps does not have any He can kill ability. everybody. He just oh. casks in. Oh, no! He has to flash out. Caps is just going to keep hitting this. I forgot his ultimate was the one that was using the initial engage, so it came back up there. Instantly blows up Blocko, the primary damage dealer. Now, oh, no. is Caps going to just solo Baron himself? I think he is. There's a TP coming in. Who's TPing in? Yubao. It's going to be the Annie. Yubao on the way. Rakan on the way from the side of GT. They're regrouping the Baron. Resets. Nobody gets the Baron. PSG are at a 7k gold deficit. But they're keeping G2 on the ropes. London, breathe a sigh of relief. The Baron did not get turned over there, despite how scrappy that situation is. G2 are still in a fine position here, going to instantly restart Started. the Baron. Yep. Junja, no flash. Ulti should be up shortly, however. Mickey ready to go over the wall one more time. His ulti's just around the corner. So far away. Wako on the way. Aji on the way. Ulti is going to be up and available for the next fight. 5k getting lower. G2 focused on the prize here. Burning down over the wall. Junja going to get the killing spree. Mickey getting isolated. Mickey getting taken out. Junja's taking one. Is he going to take a second? Does he want to re-engage? He should just stay as the Kha'Zix. He does so much damage. It's getting lower. And he takes it! PSG! Oh, just like every game in their own region, they always find a way, even here against G2, even at such a massive deficit. They steal the objective. They take the fight. It's a double for you, Bao. It's a massive win. PSG instantly bounce back after the caster curse. Find that kill. Yike was so close to the wall. He took the extra spike damage from the Baron. He got stunned up by the Annie and obliterated at the very start of that fight. And then Junjia was able to use that body, like you said, to find so many resets in that fight and secure the Baron buff. Now there was no other jungler left on the map. PSG slingshotting closer to gold now. A 4,000 gold power play already. The problem is, Mark, if Yike's really fed and Yike dies, now Junja's really fed because Junja's Yike. And that's so infuriating for G2. They're all grouped up. You can see the play here. Just, I think, a positioning mistake by the rookie here. Yike moving up to the wall here. It's going to get stunned point blank. Instagift also having to take so much damage from the enemy team. Baron as well. Once that soul's down, that's a free move into the pit. Actually, he uses ult against the reset immediately by Junjia there. Forces everyone else back. 
Vicky dying as well. Able to go in and out so easily by Jinjia. Such a heads up play there by him. Finding that kill then chase down with Mickey's soul, which was left unused that entire time. Very, very nice stuff by him. You highlighted it in the draft, we have to say it again. PSG, they knew exactly what they wanted to get out of their composition. Their G2 over saying they're welcome, completely overestimating the advantage that they had built for themselves. Now they have to play so careful. They have to play so perfect because the gold is within touching distance. It's, it's functionally irrelevant. PSG have caught up. And like we said, PSG's comp in team fights has a very clear play pattern, which is insta-kill someone and start resetting through the fight. That was Yike, again, arguably the most fit member of the team at that point in time. If they can just kind of reset, refocus, make sure that they start playing the team fight front to back, not get insta-engaged on. Backing off. You can see here on the bottom of the screen of the win expectancy powered by AWS. It was just about 100% for G2. I swear that thing is touching the top bar. It's 99.9. It, it, but the robots did not know Amazon. about Junja, so I'm just saying. Jeffrey Bezos making a miscalculation <laughs> there. Okay. Junja, now in the darkness again. He's strong on the reset. I don't think he could solo Broken Blade, though. Don't get... Oh, that's Baron Steel confidence right there. I don't, I don't know what he's doing walking up to that cannon. It's one of those situations where you feel so good after so much momentum has come back to your team. Yeah. You still need to respect the fact that you're not massively ahead. Play these fights out correctly. Caps, also very strong. 406 can half help Waco with just a single trading pattern there. Right now we're at a 4K Baron power play. And next strike on the cards. Who is going to get it? PSG. I think this is a trap. I feel like PSG should be spending more time pushing and working down extra gold into their pockets, getting bought outer turret, things like that. Caps is very happy to just keep mid pressure. This is not an important dragon in the greater scheme of the game. He's be using the Baron yeah, buff on He has it. vision too. He can just walk in. Should be easy isolation. Kha'Zix oh. just takes it back. Steal for steal, one for one here in the game thus far. Isolated Q and auto damage there combined with the smite gets Yike that Dragon Steal, and it's exactly what I'm talking about. Not the most important objective to be grabbing. PSG should be looking for gold with this Baron buff. The fact that Yike could steal that one away after such a large time commitment is a bit of a breath of relief for G2, who were just starting to feel the pressure. Now, yeah. that much closer to Soul Point, four and a half minutes, still they'll be able to at least attempt to grab Cloud Soul for themselves. Fantastic for the Zaya and Rakan, Kennen, most every champion on their team. Happy. Now, looking across the opposite side, Still feels like the same main play for PSG. We said it a million times, but you just blow up someone, preferably Kha'Zix or Gragas, uh, and then you use their skills to blow up everyone else on G2, because it's really not a high damage composition. If, if Waco is not in range to auto attack, this Viego build in an extended trade will do a lot, but this is not big burst damage like you're going to get from Broken Blade, like you're going to get from Yike. I mean, the one nice thing for the PSG side is that G2 does not really have true tanks. The closest thing is Caps, who is quite tanky and, and hard to kill uh, once he's taking his drink. But if you're targeting anyone else, you can basically kill them just with a combination of the top side of the map. Mickey going in, now has to deep, oh, but he doesn't get a chance! The CC perfectly layered, that's one reset. Junjun now stepping forward. He's squishy Rakan, but still peek his head if he wants to, but PSG just gonna be happy with the pick for now. There's nothing really to play for. That death won't cost G2 a lot unless they overcommit in the duration of Mickey's death. I do think it makes G2 uh, harder to execute on their strength as Stride Breaker forced out there just with the Lucian down. So nice little advantage. Waco still has his if he wants to go again. Once the ultimate is up, should be a shorter cooldown on the culling. But yeah, it's uh, constraining G2. The thing that they were doing so well in the early game was these map movements, catching PSG out in the jungle, getting up to lanes faster. And even though you know the gold lead is still in their favor, they have been pushed back onto their side of the map finally. They have deep wards now for PSG to track the Gragas and Kha'Zix to make sure that there's none of these surprise attacks that have been the problem that PSG is facing. Let's take stock of what has happened in this game, because G2 were wildly, wildly far ahead. I, I felt like this was over. I felt like it was back to the drawing board. PSG have a composition that scales fine, has a lot of great team fighting utility. You highlighted the strategies it wants to use, but it was not the Jinx. It was not the Aphelios. But despite that, PSG are finding these windows of opportunity. They're punishing G2 when G2 get greedy. And we went from 6, 7k gold lead to essentially dead even, 30 minutes in the game. Massive credit to PSG making the most out of this composition, even if they couldn't show in the early game, to really show up here in this late game. Yeah, very impressive stuff out of PSG. Why they were so feared in their own region, why so many pundits were expecting them to be one of the teams that could get out of this uh, pretty tough stage one of MSI. This late game team fighting cannot be undervalued, and the fact that they know how to execute their comps, they've been doing it a lot better here in this later portion of the game. Anyone who steps forward by G2 can instantly get evaporated. The fact that, of course, with Kennen 
no longer going Zonia's and most of his builds focusing on damage means that he is also a target that you can focus down very early. Yep. And now, G2 have to walk in and kind of present a target for PSG to try and annihilate. Big damage, that's the power of that RSC at this point in the game. Just able to shoot over the wall, able to get that extra Whoa. damage down. Mickey getting isolated, burning the W, can wait on those cooldowns. Has to be careful about grouping though. The Rakan engage threat is big. Yike waiting off to the side, but he's on vision, crucially. Big mistake by Yubao there. Had the Q stun charge, but pressed W as well. Didn't get the stun, invaded Wako's ultimate. So a number of uh, cooldowns down now for PSG. Not quite having the same pressure that they should. Back off here. They were trying to chip out Mickey, but did have a little bit of miscoordination. And G2 just bullying their way into the river, threatening, knowing that those cooldowns are down. Broken play TP'd into the top lane just to be ready to respond. Won't be able to find a flank with the TP, but does get some top lane prior. Wave and bot lane pushing oh. as well. So PSG, they're burning money to be here. This is the clapping guy in reverse in the movie theater gif where G2 was looking so good early on and now it's become so tense as it feels like any one of these fights can be the next one that decides the game. Baron on the table means that you will have so much pushing power should you win it. It certainly does. Recall's now coming in. PSG staggering them to make sure that they can show some presence here. But again, have to be careful. Waco isolated. Junja waiting to come in. You can see that kind of, it's almost like jousting, you know, where you're just looking yeah, at each yeah, other yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to poke you, you might W onto me, I'm going to dash it, and then you're going to die. You know, just trying to bait Mickey to use his cooldowns. And bridge on GA even, that's a great target to start resetting onto. Get that W, uh, extra CC and engage available yeah. instantly alt again. Just to be right under the back line exactly where you want to be. Baron started, G2, it's a dark map. Clear out mid, they can play this one soul. How quickly can PSG burn through this? Not very. They don't really have the upfront damage, especially with Yubao not hitting the objective, but instead the Andy gonna fish for a pick on a Mickey. They're gonna burn Mickey before the fight even starts, but Rogoblade coming over the wall. Mickey taken down, but Wako. Wako goes golden. Wako buys a brief moment of time. They're now all on the tree because Broken Blade has obliterated the back line of PSG. The cast coming in, the cast finding the kill, but Yubao now firing back. Junja now running for his life. Cast dashes to finish the kill because Aji is still alive. Yike. Oh, he's hunting now. The Kha'Zix not quite gonna connect. Caps going over the wall. Junja, there's just no Whoa. way you make it out of this one. The Divine Sunderer, not enough. The footwork is clean. But that's a huge shutdown. Yubao now oh, coming TP. in. TP now coming in. Yike needs to get out of this one. The stun now coming in. The bubble to follow. Easy peasy CC layering. Yubao now unstoppable. And in the extended fight, PSG once again coming out on top. Such a splintered fight there happening on different parts of the river. Both AD carries getting kind of obliterated by all this engage here. It's a nice idea to focus down Mickey X at the very beginning, but it kind of leaves the left side of the fight open for Junji to get chunked out as he's trying to get in range. Obviously, he didn't get any damage down, so the soul is not available for him. And then Broken Blade, critically, getting Wako so low. This is where you allow Junji to get kind of poked out heavily. Oh, we don't have time to talk about it. Got Dragon Fight. Dragon Fight, Dragon Soul. Jungler still dead, 13 seconds. Six seconds on the side of PSG. Great flip here by G2 with no smite available. If you're able to get this, you get the soul. If not, it's not a big deal. PSG only on their second dragon. Yubao waiting, looking for the setup. Broken Blade off to the side. PSG have to be careful here. The Broken Blade finds his flank. This fight is over in an instant. Yubao stepping forward, trying to burn through Cap, oh. but that's Broken Blade off to the side. PSG! Oh, they put themselves in the pit, but you cannot out-pit fight the cannon, or can you? Aji is so damn big! Broken Blade, he burned the ultimate, but the Malphite still stands. Yike here to try and save the day, but will it be enough? Junja can't find the reset. Junja does not get an opportunity, and that means G2 will take it. Yike continuing to tear through. The shutdown coming in for Aji. Aji refusing to die, but he is finally isolated, and Yike will shred through the health bar. He will climb that mountain, and G2 will take the exchange. G2 get the ace. PSG get the dragon, but the Baron is left alive. G2 should have enough damage to grab this one down. Hopefully they have enough tankiness, but that was a huge fight there. Able to blow up Waco at the very start of it. Take another look here. Caps, huge cask. Yubao does get his ultimate off as they try and burst him down, but the combination of all those engaged tools, Mickey, Broken Blade, and Caps finds those kills. Ansama does end up in the pit next to a Malphite, and the Annie ult, the fact that it was left alive this entire time, actually did a ton of damage to him, allows him to focus it down. Yike, both of them were in the pit, not isolated though, so maybe that's why it was a little bit less burst damage than he was expecting, but either way, Smite Fight goes to Junjiya, but he drops right afterwards. Kazakh's able to find that kill. The three members of G2 cleaning up the rest of the fight. Ooh, G2 winning the fight. While the other team has claimed victory, yeah, we've crossed an impressive milestone. G2 fans, make some noise. 500 kills for G2 Caps on an international stage. What a milestone, what a player. Obviously, a ton of history that we talk about uh, countless times. In this game, we're keeping it more focused on the tournament in front of us, but the history, the pedigree, always something that has to be respected and celebrated.
now checking in again on the game state, man. G2 more significant lead. If they can do something with this Baron, I think that they are back, quote unquote, in control of this game. Three players ahead of Caps in terms of kills, Jahu, uh, Perks, and Faker are the three. So pretty, pretty great company for Caps, one of the greatest players of all time. Trying to make another deep MSI run here with G2 after a somewhat disappointing end for fans' expectations yep. for the team in the spring split. But all will be forgiven with a deep run here. And while it has been a very hard fought game, G2 are now in a strong position getting their first Baron of the game and instantly starting to make work of it. Take down these inner turrets. Probably not the game ending Baron. There'll probably be some more fights, another dragon fight for Soul, most likely. But they'll be going in with much deeper pockets when that comes around, assuming they can break this inner turret. Maybe they'll find the engage, though. Cap's looking for an angle. Walker just has to sidestep all of this poke. He just doesn't really have the range to walk up here. Huge damage onto Woody. They're not following up on that one quite yet. And again, uh, pulling the trigger on the wrong engage for either side could be game ending. So tense. You want to defend the minion wave, but you don't want to step too far forward to give Caps an angle on it. Waco playing to the left side, knowing that Caps is on the right side, trying to avoid him. Cast coming out, knocking Waco back, just creating a little bit of space. Yeah, continuing to usher in minions on the bottom side has been left isolated. A tough target to lock down. Aji waiting over the wall. Caps now coming in. PSG constantly setting up and uh, looking for these angles, looking for these opportunities. It's a similar story. Both sides just jousting, as you highlight, looking for a weakness, trying to bait out a cooldown, hoping someone mispositions next to a wall. And either side finding that opportunity yet. But G2 walking away with two towers. Happy to have an extra 3K on that Baron power play. And uh, I think that's all we're going to see from that objective. Again, a minute 47. How Cloud Soul is on the table for them once again. Nice 6k gold advantage at the tail end of that, taking that reset, starting to set up for what will be the Dragon situation. Already a lot of pink wards available for the side of G2. You can see all three of these will have to get cleared out by PSG as they work their way in here. Careful though, yike. He's damage on a Jinja. Not gonna be able to do immediately burst him down. The Raptor's there just to make sure that he's not isolated. Has to be careful though, the lower he gets, the easier this is gonna be. Edge of Night coming up pretty clutch there for Yike. The W didn't land by Jinjia to pop it, but it is something that you'll have to work through in a trade sequence for Jinjia. Yeah. The fact that he's going to nullify one of those spells is pretty big. Despite some of the oopsies Yike's had this game, he is still feels like the most important member on the team. If he's left alive, he can absolutely clean up through these fights. That's exactly what happened in that Dragon situation. In fights where he's killed early, Jinjia gets to take over that body, like yeah. you said, and start running over the fight. With the GA completed, though, that does mean that he cannot be focused down first, most yep. likely by PSG. That's a huge pickup in context of how PSG wants the team fight. And I think it's really going to be hard to get value out of the Diego passive in these fights because there are so many people with GAs now with, uh, you know, the Hourglass and the like, Caps have been there for a while, but you've got a stopwatch for Broken Blade as well. Not stopping over for the full Hourglass, but just picking that up to make sure with his full AP build that he does not get picked up because very easily we can see Diego taking the cannon form and then, you know, one-shotting someone if he missteps in a fight. You can all see Waco kind of adapting to the double magic soul laners, grabbing the hex drinker for himself. Basically, everything available for everyone all sums up as we head to what could be the last team fight here around the dragon. If G2 can grab this, they will have soul for the rest of the game. Broken play breaking open mid lane though. PSG overcommitting resources to the area just to show presence. G2 not getting baited in, not overforcing for vision or control, instead just sending Broken Blade mid lane. Aji working the flank angle, no wards in their own jungle. 4G2 really, only one on the Raptor camp, though the blast going well done by Mickey there to spot out the Malphite. Pot popped, it looks like for Woody. Elixir of Fortitude just wants to survive. <laughs> just through one fight. The Broken Blade just ready to walk down the mid lane and end the game. Again, you highlighted before, this isn't soul for the side of PSG, so even if they get this, I don't know if it's worth giving up the inhibitor. Fight the steal. Kick off. Yike gonna walk in and take it anyway. It's soul for G2, it's TP on the backside. Broken Blade looking for the solo kill in the mid lane, PSG. Glimmers of hope, but it's all falling apart. That's the Bomba shredding through the entire team. Junja can't get anything done. Yike will finally get taken down, but the GA comes out. It stops Diego from finding the reset. Waku on the backside trying to get some damage down, but Hansama continuing to step forward. Junja on the backside must escape. PSG well and truly routed. Aji coming over the wall, but what can he get done? Caps. Goes golden. Yike. He's a moment. Yike on the way in. He finds one. He's looking for more. Resets left and right. Isolated targets. Eden PSG alive as G2 descend on their base. They will take game one. PSG put up a valiant effort to come back from a catastrophic early game. But at the end of the day, G2 out execute and G2 will find the win in game one. G2 stay alive in game one. Bounce back after a bit of an oopsie play at the Baron. Grab the first game of the best of three versus PSG. One game away from the main stage of MSI now for G2.
And you know what? Sick game. Uh, yeah, that was yeah, a fun as one. As an EU pundit, do you want a little more cleanness from G2? Yeah. But if they were clean, would they be G2? Probably not. So you take them where you can get them. And honestly, if they're all that entertaining, I just want three games. And you're still seeing what makes them so great. In that last sequence, the map setup where Broken Blade has the pressure in the mid lane. Bates, Yu Bao in there, kills him, then TPs in to rejoin the fight while also stealing the soul point. There's so many things that make G2 so dynamic. Yes, sometimes that means they overextend to make